Me back again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Peggy's having a bath. Peggy's having a bath. Get off. Don't ruin me, eh? Let me do it. Don't hurt it. I'm not going to hurt it. Don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. It's alive. It'll bite you. The only thing they've that's in her hair that's alive that probably bite the little girl is a Ross Clark head lice to blood clot. Fuck it, dog. No! Oh, cut me now. No more. No more. Do you want to watch your film? It is difficult to bring my children up in, into a world that where money's hard to come by, they do mean the world to me. And to give them the life that I want to give them, I can't at the moment. So this is the thing. When you're unfinancially prepared, you're not financially prepared for children, you set yourself up for failure. You're going to be in a problem from day one. It's all well and good. Oh, wanting to have children and quote unquote planning to have children, like in your mind and that. Yeah, it's all well and good being in the right mind frame to, having ch to have children. But if you're not financially prepared, all them plans there go down the drain. You're better off not planning for the child, but and at the same time being financially prepared. So you're better off not actually planning the child, but being financially prepared. Then, yeah, planning for the child. Oh, I really want a child. I really want a child and that. But being unfinancially prepared, having no fucking money in the bank. Dumb man, like yeah, all right. I'll give everyone that one mistake that they can make having a child, and they're not financially prepared or in the mind frame. They're not in the right mental space to have a child. Fair enough. But to go on to have two tree pitney, now nah, man, you're full blood. All right, are we gonna do what we said then? Yeah. First one upstairs wins. As a child, I I saw um, people knocking at the door for money off my parents. The moment that it hits you, when you realise that that that's happening to you and your family it's not a good feeling when I see the thing is that this is why i rate my mum you know like man come from a poor home man come from a good home though and it like one thing my mum always taught me although my mum didn't have much money or nothing like that she always taught man like she didn't even really sit down and say this to me or nothing like that but just you know like you learn by example you don't even know that you're actually Learn, learning by someone else's example and that but my mum always lived within her means my mum never had bailiffs knocking at the door my mum's never had a bailiff knock at her door you know never never had like running from the loan sharks or all these ccjs and them things there none of that always lived within her means and that never run up credit card debt none of that none of that my mum's never had that so I think that's partially where I get it from. My mum's never been into wearing all this Gucci and running up, getting into debt over this nonsense or that nonsense. So, yeah, that's probably where I get it from to live within my means. Like, literally, I live like I'm a broke person. I live like I'm just on a, a measly salary of 17 grand for the whole year. My man's on like 60, 70 grand for the whole year, the equivalent of. Obviously, my monthly pay fluctuates in that because I'm on price work and that. But literally, I live like I'm a broke man. That's it. Like, that's how I've always been, man. Like, just save, grind and stuff, literally. Like. Bailiff knocked at my door for money that we owed. My youngest child stood there grasping a teddy, saying, Mummy, she's not coming to take my teddy. Mum, she was just tickling my butt. Right, listen, what? are we going to do it then or what? <laughs> So, if you haven't gathered by now, this is about payday loans and that. You know some of them payday loan companies are a rip off you. Know? Some of them charge like a hundred percent interest. You know, mad, mad. Before you know it, blood, you're in a. Anyway. I like literally, like like the previous sign said, 
cash on the spot. They'll give you cash on the spot, like literally. They just approve you. Oh no, to be fair, that looks like that's a pawn shop, but them payday loan shops and that, blood, they can just give you money just like that. It's nothing. That's how they suck you in. Easy, accessible. I'm Chris, I'm 26 and I'm having to move back in with my parents this weekend because of the situation I've got in with uh, payday loans. Who the fuck walks down the road with their hands in their pocket? I'm like that, like. having to move back in with my parents this weekend because of the situation I've got in with uh, payday loans. I was drawn into a high street store. The first one was for a small amount, it was only for £50. It was just to get by for the week because I was on a weekly wage and I was on, in a temporary contracted job and I took the um, £50 loan out to cover food and travel expenses. Come the week after I missed the payment and interest was added on, so then I went and approached another payday loan company. Oh and my in days. Total I've got oh my days. So did you hear that, yeah? So, I don't know, he felt like, let's say for example, he got paid from work or whatever in it, yeah? And he didn't have enough money at the end of the month or whatever. So he took out a payday loan just to tie him over but then he missed the payment to pay back the payday loan, so he had to take out another payday loan to pay back the initial payday loan. That's the thing with these payday loans and that. You see, you see, you see that moment there when he took out another payday loan to pay off the initial payday loan? That's when he started the whirlpool of debt. That's when he started to drown. That was the beginning of the rascal end, my brothers. Never take out these payday loans, bro. You're just gonna Anyway, I don't want to swear on this thing. Six outstanding with a, a total balance of what I think. Let's peel that back. Chris, I'm 26 and I'm having to move back in with my parents this weekend because of the situation I've got in with uh, payday loans. I was drawn into a high street store. The first one was for a small amount. It was only for £50. It was just to get by for the week because I was on a weekly wage and I was on, in a temporary contracted job and I took the um, £50 loan out to cover food and travel expenses. Come the week after I missed the payment and interest was added on, so then I went and approached another payday loan company. And in total I've got six outstanding with a, a total balance of what I think is around about 600 plus. Each week, before my wages even in there, it's owed out to various different ones. Long. And it's just spiralling out of control. I would, that's what I'm saying, you see what I said, a whirlpool of debt, spiralling out of control, the same rascal up to I would hate to be in that position. I would. How do people sleep at night who are in a position where it's like, as soon as they get paid from work on the 15th or the 6th or whatever, their money is gone. I first clocked that people were actually in financial debt, financial trouble when I was working for Home Saharangi. So basically, you have the office people, so managers, admin work, all of them, housing officers, this is the borough council, yeah? So all of them types of office type of people and that. Then you had the trades people. So you got the office people, which includes everyone from the admin people to the cleaners, to the managers, to the housing officers, all of them. Then you had the trades people. All the admin people, all the office people then got, got paid on the 15th and us trade people got paid on the 6th. So some smart ass decided, oh, Maybe it would be a good idea for everyone to get paid on the same day, innit? Like, fucking genius, innit? So anyway, they moved our payday, us the trades people, the electricians, the carpenters, the plasterers. They moved our payday from the 6th to the 15th. So they pushed it back nine days to align with everyone else in the organisation. Because why are we such prima donnas that we need to be paid nine days before everyone else? So they pushed it back nine days to the 15th to align it with everybody else in the organisation. You know, there were people that had to take out payday loans or get an advance to tie them over for the nine days, you know. Are you sick like blood? That's how you know your finances are fucked, that you can't even go nine days. That means you have no savings. You literally have no savings, unless you're just one of these... Weird people that, oh, I can't touch my savings unless it's in some kind of ISO where it's locked up. And that. There was man that had to flip in, take out a payday loan for nine days. 
or take out some some little small temporary loan or whatever for nine days. Come on, man. If my company said to me, like I get paid on a weekly basis and that, but if my company said to me, oh, we can't pay you for two weeks for some administration issues. Oh, well, all right, cool. As long as I get paid my money and that, I ain't going to need to take out no stupid payday loan to time me over for two weeks or nine days. Come on, man. Right, mind out. Mind your fingers. Mind your fingers. Every single day, you'll have two pound charges that go on top. Most of that, or three quarters of that, is going to the interest and not to the actual loan. And that puts a massive pressure on each month because you know that you've got to try and pay more and stretch out your money more when you can't. You can't do that. And it's it's daunting. You can lick the spoons afterwards. Mine, come away. Come away, come away a minute. Come around and give me a minute. We're still at something like 180 odd pounds yeah. since February last year. You're never going to shake it. You're canoeing without any paddles, you know. It's hard work. Always have your tea, then go back to bed. Thank you. It's really nice, that. Is it? Hold on a minute. I mean. Uh. I mean, that can't be a son, so that must be a man. What type of... Do you know what? I don't even give up. I don't give a damn if it was an uncle or a nephew. What kind of Ross Clark man sits on a chair like that? Man, them. Do any of you lot sit on a chair like that? Man, them watching this right now. Any of you lot sit on a chair like that? I bet the answer is no, fam. Who sits on a chair like that? Like, fam. <sighs> anyway. I don't, I don't understand how that woman's struggling for bills and that, and she's got a Ross Clark man in the yard. I'm not saying he should be paying her bills and that, but the way she's talking about how she's struggling with them tigs there. Then go back to bed. Thank you. Really nice, that. Having your way, stretching your money out, thinking that that's going to stretch this week, that week, that week for a month. You think, yeah, brilliant. Then, for example, you know, me washer breaks. I haven't got £150 spur out of my wage to go and get a washer. So. I like Where the fuck are you buying a brand new washing machine for £150? It must be a second hand one. Me, I ain't buying no second hand washing machine. Nah, no, fam. To go to a paid day loan, I'll have no choice but to go. The only way that we. After our next man been washing his, washing his shitty boxer shorts with his little skid marking and his blood clot briefing on my washing machine, you mad? You think I'm. Mean could get possibly cheat our way out of it and said you know what admit defeat would be to be bankrupt and go on to the benefit system but me as a parent there's no way on god's given earth that i'm even showing that to my children after every paycheck i was left with nothing um i was even missing council tax bills and obviously that led to the bailiffs so coming in and that caused a family br breakdown because I'd not made them aware of my financial situation. I thought that these payday loan companies would, would help tie me over for the short term, but it just got worse. Look, my man said he's 26. I lost my job. They wasn't interested in my financial circumstances. All they wanted was the money back. And they just kept threatening me with interest. Um, quite nasty letters sometimes. I don't actually know. Like they said he's 26, the man look like he's blood clot, 40 years old, man, like 26. Anybody else in this situation, to be honest, and I've not really spoke to anybody else about it. At the lowest moment of all this. So you're in financial debt, you're struggling for bills, you're maxed out, you ain't got no money in your blood clot pocket, but you can find time to, to, to smoke a cigarette. This I never understand these people who are struggling for bills and that, but yet still, they've still got time for drugs and alcohol and cigarettes then. So, right now, yeah, it's January the 16th, 2023. Now, you lot might not see this for ages, I don't know. Like, literally, as of today, obviously, i got one video coming out every three days, yeah, for the rest of the entire year. So, up until, like, the 1st of January, 2024, I've got one video coming out every three days. I literally don't have to make, I don't even have to make this video. I could literally not make no videos for the next 12 months and be good. Uh, so anyway, uh, right now, obviously everyone in the country 
we're getting £66 to help us with the gas and electric. Whether you're rich or poor, it don't matter. That's what the government's doing for everyone. Man. So the post office that I go to, when you give them the voucher to get the £66 top up, they actually give it back to you in cash. And then they say, right, the post... So it's like a cost cutter shop I go to. On one side, there's a post office, and then you have to go to the till to pay for the, the electric and that. And they give it to you in cash. You know there's certain people that would take the £66 and not go and top up their electric, you know. They could be living in a freezing cold yard and still, instead of getting that £66 so that they can put the money on their electric meal or their gas meal or whatever, you know what they'll do? They'll say to themselves, ah, I'll just put £20 on today and then, yeah, get me a couple cans of, a couple crates of beer, a couple packs of cigarettes and that. Dumb. I never understand that. Man's struggling, man's broke, man's brass. Man's walking around with his hands in his pocket. But let's still, a man's still got time to smoke cigarettes and that. Damn fool, blood. No wonder why your ears falling out. Not, not saying that my ear ain't falling out, though. You get me, like, get me look all patchy up and still, you get me? I'd lost interest in everything, family, friends. I just constantly couldn't get debt off my mind and finances. It was a constant struggle against that and it felt like I was going to work to pay interest off. I confined myself to my room a lot and sometimes I often thought, what's the point in carrying on anymore? But yeah, literally, debt will break you in six pieces. Your child comes home, happy as a bunny. Mummy, we've had our school photos done, and you look at them, and it might be a pack that's only £37. You know full well that you can't pay for that because you've got no money. Even though it is sad, I, I have the samples. I keep hold of the samples of the photos. They're ruined with a line that goes straight through them so that you can't copy them, you can't print them off and make them big yourself. How shameful is that? How shameful is that? Like your child, obviously, it is a rip off. Them school photos there is a rip off. For what it is, it's a photo and that it's a rip off. But you know what? It's still fucking worth it. And I just thought of it. But actually, to get a professional photo done, it will cost more anyway. But anyway, for me, I'm a man. I like to find ways around. You get me? But anyway, how shameful is that? That you can't afford to buy your children the the, the kids photos and that. So they have to have these stupid photos with the line going through it. They, they do that to stop people like you from not trying to pay and that. Like I'll go to a lot of these tenants' houses and that, and you see school photos and that of like little kids. And I say, oh, okay, like, are these your grandchildren? And like, no, 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 they're actually my children from like 25, 30 years ago. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you get me? They're, they're memories and that, that. Well, I mean, women are more into them things. They're treasuring memories and shit. But come on, man, how sad is it that that's how you know you got a financial problem when you can't afford to fucking spend £37. I know it's a rip-off. Because at the end of the day, we've got smartphones and we could just take pictures on our phone. But, come on, man. How shameful is it that you can't afford to spend £37 on the school photos, photos for your pity? I'm not saying every single year you have to. And I don't think they do them every single year. To be fair, but... Did you? <laughs> you see families going out to the park and to swimming or to, you know, things like the museum in Manchester. You can't do it. This guy. Bet he's got a cigarette in his hand. Because I took numerous payday loans out. <laughs> it was a battle between five different companies. They didn't always understand you as a person. It was always they wanted the money back and I'd, took, I'd signed the contracts and that was it. The kids see me stressed and my work colleagues can see me stressed sometimes. and. That's when I come home at night time and start attacking the bleach. In the years that I've had these paid their loans, I have struggled and I have reaped the consequences of it. I've ended up with lack of sleep, going to the doctors, being on sleeping tablets, antidepressants, having to pull myself off them for the sake of my children. 
Well, my experience has paid their loans has put a strain on my family. It's put a strain on my relationship. It's made life hard. And if I could change that and go back seven years, then I would. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the thing. It said when people lose control, it's when people abuse it as well. Ah, fuck it, man. I just get a quick payday loan out and that. Let's see. Beginning of the end, fam. Yeah, disproportionate because some people take out a payday loan of £300. But then end up paying nine hundred pound back in total. That that don't make no sense to me. You see that number there, that Citizens Advice Bureau. That is a number you don't want to have to be ringing ever in your life. You don't want to. Furthermore, you don't want to ring none of those numbers. Yeah, step change, the money advice service, and that no. You don't want to be ringing them or ask Clark numbers, man. That means you're in a problem. Just know, if you ever have to call them numbers, they just know <laughs> you're in some, some serious problems and they, you might think, oh, I just phoned them for a little bit of advice. No. Yeah, Lizzie and Chris, there's plenty. There's hundreds of Lizzie and Chris's. I met a woman. She said that she wants to buy a property and that. And she was saying to me that she can get a heavy discount. Let's say, for example, the property is worth probably about 170. Because obviously man knows about the area and that. She said the property is worth 170. And she said that the council will give it to her for 48,000. I was like, miss, all you have to do is put down 4,800, so basically five grand, and you can have the property. And sometimes, because you get like the right to buy with like council properties and like, all councils do it. When you get the right to buy in that, let's say for example, the property is worth 170 and they say, okay, it's worth 48,000 to you. So you have to put down a 10% deposit, which is 4.8,000. Sometimes because there's so much equity in the property, because you've got such a heavy discount, because it's at, it's worth 170 at full market value, you're allowed to buy it for 48,000 pounds because there's so much equity in the property. You don't even need to physically hand over 4.8,000, which would be 10% 10, 10 of 48,000. Because there's so much equity, you don't need to give them any money as a deposit. The equity is the deposit in that. And she was like, yeah, but I've got bad credit in that. And I thought, you fucking idiot. You've got all this bad credit in that and you're living in squalor. So what was the fucking point in the first place? Like, do you know how much people are actually walking around right now? with bad credit or they're in some sort of financial difficulty it's most people but every it's funny though it's like people really know how to hide their problems behind a smile you know how much people walk down the road with a smile on their face and that but they can't sleep at night me i wear my heart on my sleeve and that yeah if that was me like me i sleep good at night yeah if that was me i wouldn't be able to sleep at night i would not be walking around with a smile on my face you know how much people driving around in nice cars and that, but they're struggling for bills. There's certain man right now driving around in a nice brand new car, but they know they cannot miss a day off work, bro. If they miss a day off work, they're fucked. If they miss a week of work, they can't take days off work. They can't go sick, but they're fucked, fam. They got money coming out of their ears every day. Paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. This financial debt, this financial money troubles thing is a serious problem, bro. I mean, because I've put in so much work over the years and made so much sacrifice, you know, I can actually take it easy now, you know, because soon I'm going to be turning over mm, about 2,200 per month. Now, obviously, I've got overheads and that, so it might knock me back about, I don't know, not like, let's say I'll turn over about 2,200, but then I'm paying out about, 1200 or something probably less than that anyway, but let's just call it i'm in profit by about 800 pound a month so now i can take it a little bit more easy than the next person because i work 
I have a full time job and I'm getting an extra eight hundred pound, extra thousand pounds a month. And the reason why I'm able to take it easy is because I put in the hard work beforehand, making sacrifice. When I was on that construction site, grinding from eight a.m. to ten p.m. and that, it was all worth it. It was all worth it, man. But this financial troubles thing, this this debt thing, this payday loans thing is mad. People need to start living within their means, man. You got people out here really paying four or five hundred pounds a month for a fucking car lease for 48 months, which is four years. It's like if you do the maths, 500 pounds over 48 months is 24 grand. That's a deposit for a property up in Northampton, but that you could be making a thousand pounds off every month. Yeah, you're going to have a little overheads in that. You might only profit five bills. I'd rather have a property and profit five bills than be paying five bills for a car that I'm not getting nothing back for. The reason why they're buying these cars, the reason why they want to drive a flashy, luxury, nice, brand new car is because they have the need to impress others around them, i.e., oh, look, I'm driving this nice car and that. I'm a, rate me, rate me. Oh, I'm driving this nice car. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in fashion and that. Or it's the need to suppress others around you. Oh, I'm driving this car, so I'm better than you. I don't want no one around me. I don't want no friends or family around me to drive the same caliber car as me. Everyone else has to drive. If I'm driving a Mercedes, I want everyone else to drive a BMW or a Volkswagen. Don't you dare get that Porsche Cayenne and that. Jay was. Nah, I'm joking. You never know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And no, it won't be any time soon, though. It won't be any time soon. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically it for today, man. These people, they need to stop with this payday loans thing. Cut out their drink, cut out their drugs, live within your rascal means. Stay wise, done now. Oh.